All right, so today we're going to talk about stem and leaf plots um, and dot plots. Um, and these are just uh, some different ways of displaying some quantitative data. Um, <clears throat> we looked at histograms, and so stem and leaf plots and dot plots both uh, are going to be a little bit like histograms um, in that we'll talk about the shape of them and, and use them to sort of show a graphical display of all of our data. The difference is, um, instead of kind of creating bars and having our data all sitting inside these bars, you can't really see each data point, right? There might be five data pieces in that bar, there might be 10 in that one, but you can't actually see them. They're all wrapped up inside the bars. Well, uh, stem and leaf plots and dot plots are a way for us to actually um, see the data points, right? The, the data values. So, um, probably not the first time you've seen, seen stem and leaf plots, but the idea is to separate your numerical data into a stem and a leaf. Um, and a stem and a leaf means that we're just going to um, really separate out to the last digit, right? Separate the last digit out from the rest of the digits in, um, in our numerical data is kind of how we do that. And so uh, when we do that the, here in shirt prices, <clears throat> the ones digit becomes our leaf and the tens digit becomes our stem. So the first thing we have to do is order all of our data, uh, uh, numerical data, right? Write them in order. So we've got a 15, a 19, uh, then 25, 26, 27, 31, and 40. Because we want to create our stems in, our, our stems in order. So we have some ones, so we have some tens, we have some twenties, we have some 30s and we have some 40s. Um, and we can create other stems if we want, but we're not gonna have any data pieces in it, so it doesn't really matter. So there are all of our stems, and then in order, we wanna write out our leaves. So there's a five, and then a nine, and the 10, so it's 15 and 19. And then we have a 25, a 26, a 27. And then we have a 31, and then we have a 40. And every stem and leaf plot needs a key to let us know that, say, 20 slash 5 uh, means 25, means $25. Okay? And that's it. I mean, for this is a pretty small data set, so we're not going to be able to tell much um, about shape or any of those things. Uh, in this particular uh, stem and leaf plot. Uh, shape and all of our uh, measures of central tendency we'll get to later. We'll talk a little bit about that stuff in this video, but we'll explore that a whole lot more later. But really, it's just a way for us to display our quantitative data so you can actually see the data pieces and where they sit in relationship to each other, right? Um, what you could do, how these are like histograms, is if you can imagine just for each of these um, different stems, they could be bars, right? And it becomes pretty easy to turn a stem and leaf plot into a histogram if you just erase the, num the, the leaves and just make the bars. So that's kind of how they're like histograms, but they're different because we can see the data pieces, okay? So stem and leaf plot here. Um, we need a key, and so here 80-2 means 82 points. This is uh, basketball scores for Cedar Grove High School, right? So what was their highest score, right? And so we see here, yes, stems can have two digits. And so if 8-2 means 82, then 11-0 should mean 110. And that's going to be the highest score, 110. What was their lowest score? 
All right, you see right here, the six and that five. So not only are the stems placed in numerical order going vertical, the leaves are in numerical order going horizontal. So that first five means that we've got a score of 65. The range, again, we'll explore some of this stuff uh, more later, but the range is basically the difference from the highest to the lowest value. So 110 minus 65 will give us 45. So the range is 45 points. Mode, if you can remember from elementary school, right? Uh, mode is the score that occurs the most often. Um, and the score that occurs the most often, if you look, you've got 276s, 276s, and you've got 291s. So 76 and 91 are kind of both the modes. Okay. And then the median, again, if we go back to some elementary, right? Median is the data point where half of the data is below that and half the data is above that. So what you kind of want to do is you can start crossing these off, one on either side, so the lowest and the highest, the next lowest and next highest, so on and so forth, until you get to the middle. And so you see that the middle is going to sit between 82 and 84. So to find the median here, we average 84 and 82, and we get 83. And again, we'll explore these a little bit more later on. Okay? But there you go. Now, um, let's say, and I'll try to make this make sense in this particular um, stem and leaf plot. Right? But let's say that we also had a score of, and well, two scores of 70. And then a score, two scores of 71. And then maybe three scores of 72. And then a couple of scores of 73. And then a 76, a 77, and a 79. Right? That one particular stem and leaf is a whole lot taller than the rest. And so what we could do is sometimes you split stems, right? So since there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, there's 12 leaves in the 7 stem. So what we can do is we can separate and create another stem right here, another 7, and just pull down the highest six. So that would start here, right? And see if I can do this. To where it makes the most sense. So we would put one, two, three, four, five, six. We would put a two here. Um, and then a three, a three, a six, a seven, and a nine. And then all of these will go away. So we've split stems. We have two seven stems now with the leaves going there. And it's, again, we, it's just all a matter of how you display the data and how it makes the most sense to you in terms of describing, right? And again, shape and center and all this kind of stuff is, are all things that we're going to talk about in a little bit later on. But I wanted to show you that it is possible to split stems if you have one stem who has a bunch of leaves in there, right? We just make a higher stem and a lower stem. That's all. Okay? All right. Um, so real quick for you, list uh, the values in the stem and leaf plot below. My guess is you quite get this. You do have a key right here. So take a second, write them out, and you can start the video back up and um, check and make sure you got them right.
Okay, so we have values of a 2, a 5, an 8, a 13, another 13, a 17, an 18, uh, a 20, a 22, a 26, a 31, and a 37. So, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I know I got them all. Okay? And there you go. Stem and leaf plots. Now, sometimes it becomes helpful to create back-to-back -back stem and leaf plots. If you have um, two data sets that seem to be related, two numerical data sets that seem to be related, and you want to kind of take a look at their distributions together, right? Distributions is just how does the data sit in relationship to each other and all that kind of stuff. And so here, uh, Super Bowl scores from 98 to 2005. And we can create a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot, right? In order to do that, the stems have to have the same value. So it needs to make sense for all the stems to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Make sure that all those stems cover all of your scores. And then it's just a simple matter of writing out the leaves um, based on where they, they fit in that distribution. So for example, on the winner side, the lowest score is a 20. So we gotta put a zero right here next to the two. The next lowest score is 23. So put a three here and then 24. So put a four here. And then we go into the 30s. We've got a 31. We've got a 32, we've got two 34s, and a 48. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have all of our scores in here for the winners. The losers, um, we start with a seven. So it needs to go here. And now we're gonna go in numerical order um, to the left, right? So my lowest value is still going to be closest to the stem, and uh, the further away from the stem we get, the higher uh, that number is going to get. So when I have to decide between 16 and 17, I've got to put the 6 down here first, and then the 7 to the left of it, which is kind of weird, uh, but that's how a stem and leaf plot works. And then we have a 19, so that's got to go in here. Then we've got two 21s. Um, we've got a 24 and a 29, right? Um, and then the key here, and it doesn't matter what score you take to use as a key. So like a 2-1 to represent that score um, is 21 points. And the reason, again, why you would do this is you can show here that the distribution of the winning scores is definitely further down the number line than the losing scores which means that it's middle. So whether you talk about mode or median or whatever, it's gonna be higher than uh, the losing scores, which makes sense. Um, the range is gonna be a little bit bigger because the highest and lowest values are larger. Just you can see how the winning scores kind of slide to the right of the number line uh, versus the losing, uh, losing scores. And it's just a way to compare those two data sets. Okay, without getting too much into the descriptive um, wording for our graphs, that's that's your stem and leaf plots, okay? Now, dot plots are kind of the same deal, where uh, they are kind of uh, like histograms in that they're, they'll show the shape and, and some other characteristics of a distribution, um, but uh, you'll see the actual data points instead of just bars to represent a bunch of data points. Um, so uh, in a dot plot, it's called a dot plot because a lot of times we'll show the data as a dot instead of the actual number like a stem and leaf plot, we'll show it as a dot. Uh, or X's, sometimes we do X's. Um, and again, it shows how the data is distributed. It does show the specific data values. Uh, and it's a, a, the stem and leaf plots as well um, are pretty good ways to identify some outliers, which we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, later in more detail as well, which are just kind of some strange values. So a dot plot is, is horizontal versus a stem and leaf plot being vertical. And it's just a number line, 
right? So there are 17 students. We asked how many text messages they had sent on a particular day. Uh, I think we all agree that, um, number one, we wouldn't be talking about text messaging anymore. We'd probably be talking uh, about Snap chats or snaps or whatever those things are called when you send them through Snapchat, right? And they'd be a whole lot higher than the numbers that we're looking at here, but you get the point. It was just, just to illustrate a point, right? So um, like our stem and leaf plots in our histograms, um, by the way, I'll back up for a second. When we create a stem and leaf plot, um, we need to make sure that we're labeling our graph, just like we do for histograms as well. Um, now, when we do a dot plot, we want to label this as well, and there's only one axis to label. So we can call this number of text messages. And you want to scale your horizontal axis to where it covers all possible data points. So we want to go from 0 to 9. So you could, if you wanted to, make this 0, and then maybe put a 2 here, a 4 here, a 6 here, an 8 here, and a 10 here right uh, so that now we're just going to list them all and we don't have to worry about putting this data set in order because we'll we have places we can go to put these numbers right and so we have a zero I'm gonna use dots this time then we have a three which would sit here which would sit uh, here and then two and then zero Four, five, four. You do kind of want to create rows the best you can. Three, so that the dots line up horizontally. They don't have to line up vertically necessarily. I mean, it would help, but and then another three. And then a one, and a four, six, three, zero, three, two, and then a nine. Okay, so there would be your dot plot. And again, you don't see the numbers, but the dots represent numbers. Um, and um, I mean, I guess if we really, it's kind of, I guess it is kind of hard to, to make a dot plot into a histogram unless you want um, every one of your um, dot columns to be a bar, but that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's not going to represent an interval. So anyway, this is your dot plot. It does just kind of, the whole idea is just kind of get an overall sense of what your data looks like. And again, we'll talk about shape, center, spread, that kind of thing later. It also lets you know if there's one particular value that sort of tends to stand out versus the other. That nine might be considered a, an outlier. There is a calculation to see if it's an outlier. Um, but just from our, um, just to the naked eye, that nine kind of stands out from everybody else. So it's unusually large compared to the rest of our data value. And the only reason why we care about that is, is um, sometimes we want to see if it's worth including in our data or not, right? Find out why that, that one particular data point is so much different than everybody else. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a way to display our data, uh, just a little bit different than our stem and leaf plots and a little different way of looking at it, okay? But that's the idea. Now, uh, you give it a shot. So there's 15 shoppers were asked how many bags they were carrying back to their car. And here is the distribution of, of those answers, right? So you give it a shot. Label your horizontal axis, come up with a way to scale it, and then place your dots uh, or Xs uh, where you think it should go. Take a couple of seconds. You can stop the video, and then I'll show you what uh, mine looks like. And this is one way to do it. Right, so uh, again, bags carried, and, and whether you put the uh, labeling of this uh, above or below the horizontal axis, it, it's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter as long as there's a label there. And then um, here I just created spots for zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then used X's this time just to be different than last time. Um, and so there's your dot plot. Okay.